ultimately martial art means honestly expressing yourself now it is very difficult to do i can make all kinds of phony things you see what i mean blinded by it or i can show you some really fancy movement but to express oneself honestly not lying to oneself and to express myself honestly now, that my friend is <laughs> very hard to do today is filled with greed, unrest, and war. The Bruce Lee legacy provides a ray of light in the darkness. Like Bruce Lee, I understand that through film, a larger audience can be affected to create social change. In 2007, I tried to put a martial arts expo in tribute to Bruce Lee, and I failed. I'm back. This April marks the 40th anniversary of Way of the Dragon. Living in Italy, every time I saw the Colosseum, I never thought about gladiators. It always reminded me of the Bruce Lee Chuck Norris fight. It still does. If Bruce Lee doesn't go to Italy and make Way of the Dragon, the timeline for the martial arts would be completely different. Bruce Lee changed so many lives. He made a big difference in my life. 2012 is the year of the dragon. Imagine people from all over the world going to Italy every year in the spirit of brotherhood, honoring Bruce Lee and the martial arts. Imagine. Taekwondo training, fellowship, and spirit. The U.S. National Taekwondo Association is your link to the traditional Taekwondo of Korea. We offer both national and world certifications. Our mission is to provide a fraternal organization for the promotion and preservation of Taekwondo as a martial art. We strive to service all needs of the traditional stylist from the highest level grandmaster to the beginner student. Enjoy the many benefits we offer. Grade and black belt certifications, instructor and master instructor courses, tournament insurance, success seminars, state, national, and international competitions, business support, martial arts supplies, monthly e-newsletter, and private training tours of Korea. Not only do we teach the best techniques, but Korean philosophy as well. We develop the complete mind, body, and spirit philosophy. Visit www.usnta.net to join today. Up next is Grandmaster Fred Parks with your Tong Sudo Lesson of the Week, sponsored by koreatongsudo.org. I'm Grandmaster Fred Parks. Today, our lesson will be based on each elbow, the first several moves of it uh, are commonly misunderstood. We'll go through the application after we demonstrate the technique. And assist me will be one of our students. Uh, Travis, come over. Yes, sir. Traditionally, what is solid is we're in a ready position for each OL ball. The very first move is a down block to block a kick. And I, how many people are going to block a kick with a hand? So, in reality, this is actually a throw. I'm going to turn, we'll walk through it, and I will explain it. As <clears throat> Travis moves in toward me, he's going to grab, he his arms come up, he's coming both hands, 
I'm going to reach over, grab it here, and I'm going to roll him away. So what most people think is if Travis were to throw a kick, front snap kick with this, in reality, we're not teaching that. That is a misconception that most people do not understand. Most black belts, the teaching Tonsu Do and other styles of martial arts that use this form, do not know. Again, I'm going to turn. Travis is coming in with both hands. He grabs. I'm going to reach up, grab it here. I'm going to grab his elbow, and I'm going to roll into a block. What it looks like was a block. If you're interested in watching more, stay tuned for further segments of uh, World Martial Arts TV and TV show. Thank you for tuning in for another segment on World Martial Arts TV, the Tonks Studio segment. Today we're going to talk about a footstep or a crescent step and the application of that, of this technique. And I'm going to ask one of our students, Travis Wise, to please come in. Yes, sir. Let me get you right here, Travis, if you would, sir. Right face me. The application of the technique, we're going to use a crescent step, and the crescent step is like a sound. It comes in, crescent, out. What is happening here as the leg comes in, if Travis attempts to throw a front snap kick to the groin, I can block it. The application, Travis steps in to that side. I'm going to step in and over, and I'm going to take my knee on the inside of his knee and for disrupted bounce. Stepping back, a little bit faster, trap. So I'm protecting myself and again I'm going to protect my groin from a front snap kick up with his knee. This is another technique that sometimes is missed. It's not taught in a lot of styles of martial arts. We do like to do this in Tom so Again it's the crescent step. Thank you Travis. Thank you for watching World Martial Arts TV and your hot Thank you for viewing another segment of our Tonksudo's uh, portion of the World Martial Arts t uh, TV. Today we're going to talk about a block, uh, two blocks, high block, low block, uh, application and a technique. There are two applications to a block. The first one, if we're doing a low block, we're defending anything from our abdomen down. And if we're doing a high block, we're defending from our face up. So I'm going to borrow one of our students, Travis White. Please come in, Travis. Yes, sir. You'll step right over here. Okay, I'm going to step back just a little bit. And traditionally what's taught is, is Travis throws a snap kick. And we're saying we're, in one of our previous segments, we actually demonstrated what this was. But for practical purposes this time, we're defending something low. I'm going to step back. And the other side, he can go take a punch with his left hand. I'm going to high block. Then I can count. So I'm protecting my face from the neck up, and I'm protecting mid, mid abdomen down. So two things we've talked we've talked about now. High block from the face up, low block from the abdomen, middle of the abdomen down, from your belly button down. And other hints from Tong Sudo on here on World Martial Arts TV. Thank you for viewing World Martial Arts TV and your Tong Sudo segment. Today we're going to talk a little bit about a two-handed grab to the collar. And, and again, Travis Wise will be assisting me. And what Travis is going to do, he's mad at me. He comes up and he grabs. Now this is just pretty much a traditional Tong Sudo karate if you're Japanese, I'm going to just come over and down. Now from here I've got whatever I want to do, technique, but backing up in slow motion he grabs, I'm coming over, I'm locking his hands in, dropping him down, changing his center of gravity, then from there I can do whatever I want to do, punch him in the face, elbow, so I've disabled him as an aggressor. Thank you Travis. Again, thank you for viewing World Martial Arts TV and your Tong Sudo segment. Introducing the Korean Karate Grand Master of Tang Sudo, the Professor Fred Parks.
The professor is here, breaking bodies with his hands. His name is Fred Parks. You should respect this family man. John is his son. They see Michelle and Haley daughters. American dragon martial arts. Yeah, you ought to go on out to his academy. Your training needs to start. From this master world traveler and collector of oriental art. Girlfriend is Christina, fiery lady from Brazil. He likes to take her out to fine dining. Just relax and chill. Magazine writer, radio and TV host, now a movie star, this grandmaster does it all, yeah, Fred Parks the professor, yeah, Fred Parks the professor. Don't miss the breakout action film of the year, Triple Threat, a high-octane action-adventure martial arts thriller. The film stars world martial arts champion Jason the Phenom Sterling as Agent Kieran Richards, who is double-crossed while trying to thwart a drug and terrorist operation. Co-stars include Andre China McCoy from The Matrix and Robert Parham from Buster Jones. Hollywood film veteran Eddie Morales from The Pit Fighter will play the leading villain. Supporting cast includes Richard Hackworth and Fred Parks from the World Martial Arts TV show. And introducing the lovely Laura Castro. The film star Jason Sterling said, Martial arts films of today are missing just that, martial arts. There will be no wire work, stunt doubles, or CGI animated characters. Everything you see will be the real thing. So don't miss it. And visit www triple threat dot the action movie dot info up next is master shane miller with your Uda lesson of the week Hello, I'm Master Shane Miller, and we're going to be doing a judo demonstration of the five basic judo throws today, and my students will be performing the throws. Okay, I'm Josiah Miller, and I'm going to be performing shoulder throw. So first what you do is you shift to the right, and it comes back up, skip through, down, up, right. Now we'll be doing it full speed. Travis Wise, I'll be performing a major leap throw. All right, start off with the grip. First thing we're going to do is we're going to lift to off balance our opponent. As our opponent comes back down, we're going to shift forward, get our hip right up against theirs, shoot through, and push down. And here's how the throw looks full speed. My name is Andrew Rivera. I'll be forming the sacrifice throw, side sacrifice throw. First off, you're going to start with regular grip. You're going to position him to go to the right. When he comes back up to the left, you're going to put your foot in place of the outside of his uh, right foot. At the same time, you're going to drop to your hip. So I'll do it slowly at first. So it looks like at full speed. I'm Troy Boyed, and I will be performing a double leg takedown. Take a regular grip, and first thing you want to do is off balance him. So I'm going to pull him up. And as he comes back down, I'm going to clear the arm, step forward, and then grab behind both of his knees, and then pull up, and don't fall back. All right, so I'll do it slow first. And this is what it looks like at full speed. Hi, my 
My name is Robert Torres, and I'm going to be doing a hip throw. First, you're going to regular grip. You're going to turn to the right. As he comes back up, you're going to go around, grab behind the belt. You're going to extend your hip, whip your pace, and then you're going to lift. That's what it looks like in full speed. That's our five basic hip, uh, five basic uh, first throws in Udo <clears throat> at the American Dragon Martial Arts Academies, and then we are certified by the Rock Udo Association, the Republic of Udo, Republic of Korea Udo Association. We are, I believe, the first martial arts school of its kind to teach the true martial art of Udo, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in a class uh, nearby. Thank you. Next, we have Dr. Ronald Stone with your Hapkido Lesson of the Week, sponsored by HeimuKwan.com. So when, when we talk about it, again, think of those light bulbs and think of pressure points. Now, I've, uh, the, an easy way to understand pressure point is these are similar to acupuncture points. And again, a lot of people say, well, I don't know about pressure point fighting or whatever, but they have no problem going to an acupuncturist to cure a headache. Well, there's a, there's a point right here. It's called lung five, and it's about three fingers down from the bend in the elbow. Okay, if you press on that point, you're going to disrupt the key energy flow. And 
So if you do that, okay, you're, you're going to notice that there's a uh, body reaction to that. Now if I push in other places, I'm going to push equally hard, Billy will tell me if I'm lying, if I push in areas where there's no pressure point or key meridian, okay, then nothing happens. Watch his body reaction when I hit the right point. Again, it's a lung five point. Okay, so how do we how do we know this? Well, again, those of us let's sit back here, make it a little easier for the camera. Those of us who uh, have practiced uh, pressure point fighting or pressure point whatever, the criticism we always hear is, get real. He's punching you. You're not going to be able to use the pressure point. Okay, you're not going to be able to take your finger and you're going to be able to hit that exact lung five point. We're not supposed to. That's not that's not the way they were intended. They uh, are intended to allow us to have either pain compliance or to set up another reaction. What do I mean by that? Well, if he's punching uh, and I happen to strike a blow on that and that happens to lower him, it sets this all open. Okay? Now, in, 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 in practical term now, in terms, um, what we're doing is we're doing two things. One, we're causing pain, of course, but at the same time, the really important thing is to set this up for an upward strike. Uh, and this is the part where I always explain to people that if you're teaching everybody that this is a static upward block, what I call kitty karate, think about it. Do Chinese generals in the 1300s really train their soldiers to stand there like this and, and accept blows from people charging at them with clubs? No. This was never meant to be a static position. Neither was the deep front stance. These are ending and closing positions. So this particular move was actually an upward strike and blow to this area here. But if you simply hit someone, if you simply hit someone in the neck here, you know, the other way, if I simply pound someone in there, he'll, you know, it'll hurt a little bit and then he'll turn around and knock me out. But if I, there's a, a plexus of, of pressure points right in here where the carotid artery, the phrenic nerve that goes to the diaphragm, the vagus nerve that goes to the heart, and the carotid artery that goes to the heart controls all the blood flow to the brain. All of those are in that same triangle. If I set up this pressure point, okay, right in here, and I hit it here, exposing this, and as he's coming down, I'm coming up with a strike, it's going to take his head off. You have to be very careful when you practice this because you can either knock him out or kill him, and that's not the intent of what we do. So. Uh, what you're doing is energizing this, much like short-circuiting one part of the electric cable. So uh, one of the most common drills that I see, and I'm just going to be punching here, one of the most common drills that we see, and I see, so we see this a lot in karate, although we see it in several other styles, is a triple block with a strike. So he punches, and we see this a lot. Okay, punch, boom, okay, go. Right? And I often wonder in my why we waste the time with this, this and this, right? Why do a threesome, right? When it's just as easy to go like that. And the reason that I later learned when I started studying key application is not only are we chambering, meaning not only are we cocking into a fight, into a technique rather, but we're using pressure point and key interruption. How do we do that? This is not supposed to be a simple push block. This is not supposed to be an inside-outside block. And this is not supposed to be a simple knife hand to that area. I mean, you can try it. I'm going to hit him fairly hard, and you tell me if, how that hurts if you go down. Boom. Okay? Great. He's still standing. I'm in trouble, especially if it's Hulk Hogan. What this is, is technique one, and I'm going to do it in three part. Now, I, while I talk about a three part, I would emphasize that in Hemo Kwan Hapkido, we always tell our students, you're going to learn initially one, two, three, because we're learning, but it's all done simultaneously. It's all done as a flowing technique. We don't teach static movements here. This is not about standing still and absorbing blows and following and chambering. There's always going to be somebody stronger or as strong. And if you trade blows, you're going to both be in pain. One of the fundamental overriding principles of Hapkido is the principle of non-resistance. And another one, just as important, is the water and the circle principle. The water principle is I'm going to flow. I am not going to stand still and absorb. And if he pushes, I'm going to pull. So this technique here, one, two, three, is in reality a knife hand or forearm blow to the pressure points on the wrist. 
that's going to numb his hand, especially if he's got a little short stick or a knife or whatever. So he comes in with this, boom. Second hit, back to lung five. You can either do this as a bone forearm strike, as a closed wrist, I mean a, a flexed wrist strike, a downward strike, or a knife hand. That is going to do just what we talked about. Boom, it's going to turn his head and it's going to open up those pressure points into the third push strike. World Martial Arts Magazine columnist and martial arts weapons expert, Master Darren Norris, is coming to World Martial Arts TV. Tune in each episode as he teaches us the finer points of using various Hapkido weapons. Be sure to visit his website, www.masterdarrenorris.com. And remember to like him on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash Master Darren Norris. From Hendersonville, North Carolina, I present you with the one, the only, Aikido, Hapkido, and Yusu Korean Jiu Jitsu Master, Darren the Dragon Norris. Martial arts weapon master, Darren Norris Expert at the arts, technique is the purest Flowing like a river cause he moves like water Two sons, Shane and Tommy, a proud father Hailing from Henderson, the North Carolina Beautiful wife, Sandy, staying right beside him He's deadly, put you in submission He'll make you dizzy from elbows and knees that he brings Keep switching, his sons are instructors And both of them black belts You in a tight situation, call them for help The martial arts king of North Carolina Moves at the speed of light, it might be hard to find him Energy flowing from his fingertips And you better run fast or you might get kicked The dragon is his name, so you better beware This is the real life street, there's no rules to play fair Uh, Darren Norris, the dragon Uh, you know you better beware